What's up, The Rock? My name is Abel Orbistando, your youth pastor here at Columbia River Foursquare Church. If you didn't know, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube where you can like, love, and subscribe to all new videos, updates, and content that are happening here at The Rock. If you didn't know, we just had our um, moving, our drive-in movie night that happened last week Sunday. It was awesome. It was amazing, and it was fun. We had we watched How to Train a Dragon, and so thank you all who came out and watched the video with us. Please be on the lookout for any upcoming events um, and more exciting events that are happening. So stay tuned. Be um, present in our Facebook or our Instagram through um, August 16th and August 23rd. Um, we will be taking a break from our rock videos as well as our guy Zoom due to the fact that we are having family camp that are coming up that week. So enjoy your last one, but we will be back on August 30th for more videos, maybe also updates of new exciting events. Also, we this um, this Sunday, tonight at 6.30, we have our guys Bible study group and girls at 7 o'clock on Friday for their girls Zoom Bible study. Hope to see you guys there. God bless. So we're continuing our sermon series, Salt and Light. Last week, we did not have a um, sermon series on top of this be, due to the fact that I was preaching that Sunday at the main service. So if you're wondering where that um, Salt and Light uh, um, sermon, you can go back to our main page at cr4square.com. You can click on the sermon from last week, and that's where I was up on. But today, we're continuing our sermon series, Salt and Light. There have been many times where I asked the question, is the Holy Spirit in me? How do I know that the Holy Spirit is in me? Or what is the evidence of God in me? Do I need to be super spiritual? Is that when I know? Or do I have to know how to pray? Or I have to go up to people and heal? Like, what is the evidence of God living in me? These were the questions when um, that flew through my mind when I was a middle schooler or, or even in high school wondering, um, how do I know or when, yeah, how do I know that I'm a Christian? So many questions passed by my mind, but one stood out. What is the evidence that we are Christians? Is it just the praying? Is it the baptism? Is it praying that prayer? We have this idea of what Christian, Christianity looks like, but does it translate to what the, what the Word of God says? If Christians are to be salt and light to this world, we have to have the evidence that backs up that salt and light. I mean, salt, how do we know if salt is salt? It's because it has the flavor, the taste. How do we know light is working? It's because it actually shows light. There's, it, it, it takes the darkness away. And so in the same way, same way, how do we know that we are Christians? Like what is the signet ring? Or maybe the hall pass? Or in a better term, what is the license? Like what gives us the evidence that we have that Christianity? For example, like how do we know that we're able to drive legally is the license. How when we get caught walking around in school when we're supposed to be in class, it's the hall pass. Um, what is that? Um, back in the day when, when someone had authority or power, it's the signet ring that reveals to the officials that this person has power. In the same way, what is the evidence or what is the, ev yeah, the evidence or that backing for Christians? I'm so glad that God did not leave us alone to figure all of this out, to figure out his heart, his mind, his soul, but he left us a great example through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, and by the word of God. The, the license to be the Christians. So turn, you can pause the video you, and you can turn with me to 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 through 17. We're going to be reading. This is our main passage for this week. And it says this, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that, we, um, that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, 
we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Verse 13, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us, um, given us of his spirit and we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledge that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in us, in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love of God has sent, um, sorry, let me say that again, verse 16. And so we know and relay, rely on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Verse 17. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. So on my main point for today is accept the Holy Spirit. Accept the Holy Spirit. When we accept the Holy Spirit, we are practicing obedience to God. We are allowing the Spirit to live in us. We are allowing God to live in us. When we accept the Holy Spirit, we're accepting God. When we are, um, when we are accepting the Holy Spirit into our lives, when we're acknowledging God in our life, that is that first step. That first step of acknowledging God. Verse 13, it says, this is how we know that we live in him and, um, and he in us. He has given us his spirit. That is the license. That is the signet ring. That is the evidence that God is in us, that we are Christians, is accepting the Holy Spirit, acknowledging that he lives in us. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. The Trinity, the Trinity, that's how Christians explain our God, is the Trinity. Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The three in one, or one, there we go. Three in one. And so Jesus puts it this way in John chapter 14, verse 23 through 24. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching." My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own, but um, own. They belong to the Father who sent me. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, when we choose to obey God and display love, to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and show love to our neighbors, we show the evidence of God living in us. So accepting the Holy Spirit is basically um, loving others. First, loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. Second, loving our neighbors. Why? Because it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then love, your, um, and then the second, Love, holy snap, I am blanking right now. <laughs> Can any of you guys get it? But love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love others. And so, but what is this love? How do we know what, what, what kind of love? I mean, today, so many people don't even know what love is. They think it's just a word, or they think it's just um, physical. But the love that God is talking about there is agape love. This agape love, this unconditional love. Well, what does that unconditional love mean? In my sermon of last week, we talked about it. I gave a little bit of a, 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 a word to it. So what is love? What is this love that Jesus is talking about? Love entails risk and sacrifice. God showed risk and sacrifice to all humanity. This is the same type of love that he's asking us to do for our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the same type of love that God is asking us 
to do for our neighbors, anyone that is in need. Remember, we talked about that last week in the Good Samaritan. Anyone who is in need is our neighbor. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ as God, as their Savior, is our brothers and sisters in Christ. So what is this love that Jesus is asking? Love entails risk and sacrifice. So the license from God is the Holy Spirit. The signet ring is the Holy Spirit. It is God living in us. How do we receive God? By obeying his teaching. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then love others. What kind of love is this? This love entails risk and sacrifice. The evidence of God in us is love. And this love is being loving to our brothers and sisters in Christ and having the eyes to see our neighbors and showing that same love of risk and sacrifice. Imagine if Christians risked more of their life, their time, their energy, and maybe their finances. First to the believers, then to the neighbors. What if Christians sacrificed more of their life time and energy and finances first for the believers then to their neighbors what would the world look like students what would it look like if you showed love what kind of love a love that entails risk and sacrifice maybe it might be that person that you know that nobody likes at school maybe it's maybe it's your brother or your sister that irritates you all the time. When they come up to you, can, you, can I play with you? Instead of saying, no, get away, maybe it's, sure. What does it look like for you to give your life, your time, your energy, and maybe your finances, your allowance, first to maybe a brother and sister that's struggling here at the rock or maybe it's someone that's at your school or a friend at school or maybe it might be someone around you who is around you that could use some love maybe it's your parents maybe it's your grandmother maybe it's people from the church who is it when we choose to obey God we expose our relationship with God for all to see. When we choose to love God, we reveal the evidence of God in our life. Students, let's keep it simple. When we accept the Holy Spirit into our life, how do we accept the Holy Spirit? It's through obedience, Obe obedience to God. Obeying the teachings of Jesus. What is the teachings of Jesus? Well, if you don't know what that is, dig into the word of God. Dig into the gospel. What is the gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Start there. Start to read. Read what it is. Oh, I don't like to read. Well, guess what? You know, a lot of people, including myself, I struggled with reading. Reading. But when the love of God came into my heart, I wanted to know who Jesus was. And therefore, I started to read the Gospels. I started to read the teachings of, the, of Jesus. And it started to inspire me of how to love, to show risk and sacrifice. And that's the same thing that Brett Koga, that's the same thing as Josh Pangalinan, that's the same thing as Taylor Wilkins, that's the same thing of these brothers and sisters in Christ that showed me how to love, is because they risked, they risked, they sacrificed, they sacrificed what? Their time, they sacrificed their life, they sacrificed their finances, so that I could see the love of Jesus Christ. Maybe it's inviting a friend over to your house and playing video games. Maybe it's praying at the table. Maybe it's cooking dinner for the family. Maybe it's um, cooking dinner, bringing the food, setting up the, 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 the dinner table, and saying, hey, I'm going to pray. And doing that daily. Maybe it's you cleaning up your room and going up to your mom and saying, thank you. Or going up to your dad. Or going up to your... Um, 
your guardian and just saying, thank you for your hard work. I may not show it every day, but I appreciate your hard work. Maybe it's just words of encouragement to other people. Maybe it's going and buying people food. Or maybe it's you that are the one going out there and mowing the lawn, doing your chores without anyone telling you. These small, simple tasks shows the evidence of God in you. Maybe at this point right here, maybe you're not a follower of Jesus Christ and you're hearing this whole sermon and you're like, Abel, I don't know. However, you can take this part away and be like, man, these are still points that shows something. I mean, imagine if you just start doing the good stuff. Now to you Christians, you believers, this is a whole different thing. This is the obedience to Christ. This is what God calls us, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. What does that mean? That means to risk and sacrifice. What it might have, you might have to risk your reputation. That might have to risk um, the, everything that you have built up to give it all back to God and say, you know what, I'm gonna chase after God. If there's an opportunity to go on missions, I'm gonna do missions. If there's an opportunity to go on retreats, I'm gonna go on a retreat. If there's opportunity to choose to, to do a prayer walk, I'm gonna start doing a prayer walk. Students, this is your time to listen and hear the heart of God. So remember, our main point is accepting the Holy Spirit. How do we accept? obedience to God when we start to obey God we accept God let's pray dear Heavenly Father we thank you for all that you're doing Father we praise you for all your love and your compassion Father we pray that in the name of Jesus that you would let your words fall onto the hearts of the students and that you would um, bring in Lord God renewness of their hearts in their relationship with you Father I pray for those students that are wanting a relationship with you Father, I pray that you would allow them, just like you allowed my mom. My mom was not led by anyone else, but you led her right inside the kitchen of my, grand, my grandma's house, where you led her to a, just a simple prayer of asking Jesus into her life. And Father, that you faithfully did that into her life. And so Father, I pray that you would inspire the students to pray a genuine prayer to you, asking Jesus to come into their life. And Father, we thank you for what you're going to do and how you're going to bring back this youth ministry with a revival of students. And so, Father, I pray a revival of newness in the students' hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. See you guys.